Hey YouTube, bit of a change of plan. I think I will do the video for the corker today. This is before I've sorted out the switch. So this is a guitar, thanks very much to B&L Custom Guitars in Pennsylvania. Um, I, this, I've, I've kind of talked about this in the live stream and stuff, but this guitar, 2019 it was built by this corker guy who makes them all by hand. Um, Bill at B&L bought two Telecasters and this one. And the two Telecasters sold pretty much immediately for 1500 bucks. This has been hanging in the shop window and on reverb since then. And nobody ever showed any interest in it. They kept dropping the price and dropping the price. And I was obviously saw it in the window and went, what the, what, it's amazing. Um, it's got an awful lot of really cool details on it. And he just gave it to me. It's like, what, really? So, yeah, pretty humbled by that. So, what we have here is, I don't even know what shape you'd call it. I suppose it's a sort of strat. Running through some of the things, like this is a one-piece burl maple body, um, which is pretty stunning. It's kind of got like I think it's a rubbed oil finish. But look at look at things. Look at the neck join. See that that piece there is carved out of of the neck, and then it, to line up with that, it's not the most. It's a wee, it's a wee bit jaggy when you're playing it. You know, you get used to it very quickly. Though. But I mean, just look at it. It's a, there's stunning angles, and the workmanship in this is phenomenal. Um, it's got binding, but the binding kind of fades to nothing here for this bit, which is really cool. Also, kind of it ends here as well for the the scoops. Um, in the if you look up Cocker guitars, the guys uh, I think he still makes them. Um, I've not there's no other ones like this, so I think these are sort of one offs. And when you make one that's a little bit odd, rather than a Telecaster or a Strat, people don't want to buy it. So that's kind of why I've ended up with it. Um, I, initially I wasn't too sure about the shape but now I think it's absolutely amazing just when you get used to it um, yeah it's got a wooden scratch plate which I'm it's been sitting in a window for a long time it's kind of bent so I'm going to have to try and work out some way of making it it's not, not bent much just a little bit lifting um, it's got like a a five ply wooden scratch plate um, this is a, I think it's a, a two point bridge I think it's a, a a hardtail with intonation things on it. I think it might be a Goto. It says Made in Japan on the back of it. Um, the pickups are a DiMarzio Tone Zone and a S2 Super Distortion 2. Something like that. You can see it's got like a... We've got the Allen key hex bolts for the neck pickup and this one has the sort of more normal slugs and screws. Uh, I did change the knobs. I'm going to adjust them a wee bit. This one's sitting a bit high. I'm going to put some washers behind it. So I put these, uh, these actually the knobs off the wee red base. So it's got encore knobs on it. But I like these. These are my favourite knobs. The ones that have got wee notches on them. The ones that were on it were just, you know, just plain round. I, I prefer the notchy ones. They're just, they're just cooler. Um, yeah, so the neck is, I think it's mahogany. Like, one piece in the back. And it's got like a, a maple fingerboard. But the maple fingerboard has two runs of two lots of binding on it which you can't really see anymore but if you look at the original pictures and reverb i think it's like purple heart and walnut or something like that but they've kind of faded into each other so it just looks like one piece of wood but it is actually two um the, my favorite thing about this guitar probably is it's got this see where, where the binding doesn't go all the way down through the fingerboard so you end up with the bits of the maple fingerboard a stripe which you can see when you're playing and it's like people don't pay enough attention in my opinion to when you're actually playing a guitar, that's a similar thing. There's an Ibanez bass, um, one of the, it's like one of the laminate neck ones, and it's like you can see big stripes in the back, and it looks great. And that's the bit you actually see when you're playing. You know, I'm mean, okay now. I'm looking in the, the not the mirror in the in the camera. Um, I can see the guitar, but when you're actually playing it, when you're actually playing it. You can see this as well. See the way that that binding just goes down into a lovely little smooth bit. Just to kind of it kind of shows off the fact that it's like one piece. It kind of looks like a cake you can bite into. It's lovely. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a, oh, I'd say that's about five mil thick walnut facing on the headstock. Um, no, no, it's not really showing it, is it? You can see it there. See, it's like it's got like a, I, I, I wouldn't be calling that a veneer. That's like a, 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 a cap, I suppose. And this is cool, sort of wee thing to make it different. I suppose technically it's kind of like a Telecaster head. It's also got a, what I thought was originally a truss rod cover. Here, a piece of wood with an inlaid Jupiter-type planet thing on it. Um, it's got a, 
I, I don't know. Is it, is it a, I don't know if it's a bone nut, but it kind of feels like it's made of stone or something like that. It's like a sort of ceramicy stuff. Um, it's got cool inlays. Seems like wee bits of inlaid wood, kind of stripy plywoody type, not plywood, but you know what I mean, laminated type thing, and then a a mother of pearl dot, and then a, ply, a mother of pearl dot. One fault I have with a guitar, not really a fault, uh, it's only got one dot on the edge of the board for the 12th fret. I like having two, but I'm not going to change it. I'll just get used to it. Um, yeah. I think that's be kind of done the... Most of it's got clusting tuners on it, which I think is probably for weight. I did weigh it, I weighed it last night, and it was like just over four kilograms, I think. I can't remember. So we had a wee thing on where everyone had to guess the weight. And um, I think it came under four, actually, when you take the strap and the lead out. In fact, might as well just check it. The first thing I heard was it was heavy. I was like, oh, it's heavy. And it was up here, all right. And it was like, you want it? You can have it. Just take it. And I was like, what? And it's like, oh, God, I've got to try and bring it back. So we did bring back eight guitars from America. Um, it was only meant to be six. And then Jen got, I got this and Jen got a bass. Um, so it comes in at 4.03 with the lead and the strap on. But if you take off the strap, which I kind of pinched. Uh, it was an American one. Um, yep, I'll just sit and let, I'll just let that buzz while I'm... Okay, I won't, I won't just let that buzz. Right, I'll reset this again. It was 4.03 it was sitting at, so now without it, I think it might come in under, under 4. 3.91. 3.93 is what it's coming in at now. So under four kilograms. So on the heavy side, but not not a less Paul, you know. Um, I remember my pals, uh, Ibanez Blazer, which was the, the reissue one, was 4.4, which is kind of chunky. Um, if you compare this to like the Washburn Falcons, they're kind of that sort of range. Um, but it does balance really well. And it feels really solid, so balance is more important than weight. You know, if you've got like a light guitar that's neck heavy, it feels heavier because you're constantly having to hold it up. This one, as you can see, when I do this, the special, the special dance, and yeah, um, it sits just perfectly. A very well designed thing. We've got this the forearm chamfer. Not really any chamfers on the back, just very rounded. Kind of, kind of get the coffee table look going on about it. Um, yeah. Truss rod is adjustable from here. You can see that Bill actually told me that to, to take the truss rod or to get out of the truss rod, you just undo that screw. And uh, if you look there, it's actually been um, there's a bit of a, a dink where I think he's tried to take it, tried to prise it off with a chisel. And I was looking at it thinking it kind of looks joined to me. Um, Papa has now got a wee chip in it there where something has been tried to be prised off with a chisel, but it, you have to adjust it in there, which is annoying. But once it's set, it should stay. Um, I had a, a wee bit of problems with this yesterday, just trying when I was trying to set it up. So I still could I could do with just a little bit less on it, um, a little bit more. Just it just needs to be a little bit off, not not much though. But I think it's suffering a little bit from never having been played from new. Really, probably I played it more yesterday than it's ever been played in its life, um, and it's just getting better every time I play it. Just like as everything tightens up and it gets used to being a guitar. It's also been hanging in a window of a shop in direct sunlight for a couple of years, um, which I think is why the wood on the, 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 these two, the two strips of wood on the edge of the fingerboards have um, kind of, it just looks like one, one piece of wood now. I think that that's kind of made, I think that's why the scratch plates kind of warped a little bit, because I mean, it was roasting pencil tucky. Um, and I had to do a, a fair bit of fret work on it to get it playing pure, the, the way I wanted to. But again, I think that might be something to do with, you know, the frets maybe popping out with just being in a window, sort of pure extreme heat a lot of the time. Um, but when I, I, so I, when, I got, when I got it in the shop, I did a wee bit of adjustment myself, got it sort of playing, realised the frets weren't brilliant. Um, or not, they're brilliantly cut on the edges, but I think it's just through time it's suffered a little bit. Uh, but when I came back, I adjusted the truss rod so it was perfect. Put strings on it and it was just going mental all over the place. I think now it's kind of acclimatized. Um, there's a, I was saying, I don't really understand what humidity is. We don't really get it in Scotland. But I was like, what? Humidity is a pure bane of the guitarist over there because everyone, depending on the season, it just, the neck does this on its own. Uh, it doesn't really happen to us. I think we've just got like a state, because we're always close to them and it's like, 
30 miles an hour direction to the ocean, so it's always the same humidity here. Um, rather than being dry. But uh, yeah, so it's got a... The thing which I'm going to do next, which will be... That's why I'm doing this video today. I've actually just done a video of the electric teapot, which I'll probably put out tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, I'll probably put out the one where I've actually sorted this switch. It's a, a it's like a joystick. So it just looks like a Les Paul switch. You get one, two, three. But also you can push it down and you get one, two, three. Um, currently, it's wired crazy. It doesn't... It's not logical how it's wired. Basically, what I would consider to be most likely to be the neck pickup is that this is actually the bridge pickup. So up and towards me is the bridge pickup on full humbucker mode. Uh, so up towards me is the bridge pickup. See, and this one's off. But then if you go to down the way, but still, position one is now this one. Now the bridge pickup is a inner coil only. And the other ones don't really make much sense to me. So if you're going, if you're we're talking about, I'm going, to, I'm going to refer to this as the top line. And the, the top line is bridge pickup, and then in the middle, it's. I think it's that one tapped, and then the inner coil. So it's sort of not really working properly because obviously that's quite loud and that is sort of on so there's something funny going on there it might be out of phase uh, let's have a so bridge pick up out of phase and then this to three is the bridge and now the neck pick up which is when I tap it is more on but it's seen in the middle in the middle position it's sort of on as opposed to being on so apart from being the wrong way around I would obviously have the neck position here and the bridge position there uh, if you go back, back up to, down to the bottom run this is the, the single coil of the bridge and then this one is a really loud one which I think is all the pickups on both pickups on in series which is interesting okay both of them on in series so you get like a really loud sound as opposed to just a neck pickup on its own bridge pickup on its own neck on its own both of them on and then the last position is i don't really know it doesn't seem to make much sense so it looks like it's the inside coil of the neck pickup and the bridge is a humbucker so doesn't make sense. It's the wrong way round anyway. I have to have the neck up at the top and the bridge down there because that's the way all guitars are. Um, it's amazing how much that hampers playing the guitar, having and not knowing where the switches are. Whether I'm going to keep the freeway switch, it's not yet decided. Um, I think what I might do, assuming I can wire it this way, I think you can make basically any position do anything. I quite fancy having the top row as neck humbucker and then the outer coil or then the inner coils inner coils split and then bridge humbucker and then the lower level i have neck single coil the other whether it's the, the other one so it's inner coils or outer coils the opposite of what the other middle position is and then bridge single coil just to make it easier to understand so it gets six sounds um <laughs> I looked up the freeway switch, they're not actually as expensive as I thought they were. I thought they were maybe going to be about 80 quid, in which case it would be getting ripped out and sold. And I would put a three-way switch in it, a push-pull pot, or two push-pull pots. Um, but it's a really nice volume control. I think it's a 450k Gibson pot. I've not even tried using the tone yet. Very nice. And the one thing I think I, did, I actually showed this in a video on the, when I was actually in America. Uh, can I just take this out? So it's only held on with two screws. But uh, it's, when you, you start getting into the the level of detail on this, is absolutely lovely. Hence why I'm taking the back cover off just to show you. It's like the one piece of wood thing. Um. 
because it's actually not it's not just a flat piece of wood either it's got like this bit inside it which fits inside the routing so it actually kind of clicks in really well that's why it only needs two screws to hold it in um, but if you look at the electrics in the back you can see there's the that's that is actually a gibson branded pot that's uh not branded it's got an orange drop capacitor and this super switch here which i'll probably do a video of me rewiring it to make it do what i want i couldn't find any very obvious diagrams for it so basically i think i'll just sit with the output and i multimeter and work out what it's actually doing to make it do what i want it to do um there's an awful lot of terminals on it and i just don't think i think it's just not been done quite right i, I get i kind of get the impression it's it's been followed by um but look at that that's that's routed out of one piece of wood and the fact that it fits inside this groove is just cool um i'm going to put these back in again so i don't lose the screws um i think maybe it's been wired like the guy who wired it obviously knows how to build a guitar but maybe doesn't know how to wire it when you're doing something stupid and new i think it might have been copied from a diagram and either the diagram's not done what it wants or something's been put on backwards or because it's DiMarzio pickups, I wonder if the diagrams may be for Gibson pickups or something like that. That kind of wouldn't explain why it was the neck and the bridge were the wrong way around. Either that or it's just been designed that way. That's what the guy reckoned was the best sound you could get, but I want it's not what I want. Uh, so 16 minutes I've not actually said in. So basically I know where three there's three sounds I'm going to use. I'm going to use the neck pickup on humbucker, the bridge pickup, and the bridge pickup single. Bridge pick up single ball. So the action's actually sitting at a wee bit more than one and a half mil. I like at one point two five if I can get it. It's got sustain.
I'm back up. In the bridge.
It seems very responsive and um, dynamic. And these might be my favourite pickups yet. Um, they just seem to be this tone zone or whatever it's called. I don't know how much that's to do with the guitar. I mean, I'm assuming it's strat scale. I'm pretty big. Did I check it? I might have checked it last night. I can't remember. I think it's strat scale. The neck certainly has a, a strat -y feel to it. Um, put, 25 and a half it is it is strat scale as i suspected i've also put nines on it it's had tens on it forever uh, so a few things having to be adjusted maybe that's why the trust road went flat actually now to think about it rather than the you I know mean, i was thinking it was to do with temperature or climate or humidity or something but when i got it back and put strings on it the strings were touching the fingerboard and, it's like, yeah. and it basically just sounded guff for a while but i persevered and then um, now it seems to be settling in and actually been really rather wonderful. Um, I have to I have to sort that switch this afternoon. That's basically what I'm going to do now um, to make it just so I understand what it does. It's confusing. Uh, I don't. It's like kind of like the joystick switch is kind of a bit mad. Um, I'm not sure whether I like it or not. Um, I'll see. I, I suppose it's good just because it's something different. It keeps the the, the front of the guitar very minimalist. You know, I was thinking maybe having a push-pull pot, because obviously you just have a, a standard three-way Les Paul switch and a push-pull pot under the volume to split this and a push-pull pot under the tone to split this gives you all the sounds, gives you three, four, five, six, seven, eight, gives you eight sounds doing it that way. So this has only got six, so I have to choose the the best ones from that. Um, but I quite, I quite like my favourite sound on like a two-humbucker guitarist when you split both of them. And then have both of them on, so it gives you the sort of telecaster sound, which currently this one doesn't do. Um, and that'll that'll open up my playing it clean thing a bit more. Um, obviously running the running the rat pedals now, playing through the orange TH30. You want in the three by twelve cabinet. Um, it's, it seems to be holding tune now, but new strings are just new on it yesterday, so it needs. But it does seem to have excessive sustain. Sustain and things that affect it. I mean, the guitar I've always thought of the most sustain was my Washburn Falcon because it's got lots of sustainy things in it. It weighs a ton. It's got a five piece neck through. It's got pickups called power sustain. It's got a locking bridge. It's through strung like a Telecaster. Um, it's brass nut, brass bread, brass, brass everything. But this one is pretty good. So whether the tone wood thing actually comes into it, I don't know. Maybe just, when you look at the way this has been... The way this has been built, you know, the, the attention to detail on it, it's obviously... I think build quality, to be honest, has more impact on the sound of a guitar than wood choice. Unless you're making it out of you know, polystyrene or something, but if you're making it out of, I don't know, Asher Mahogany or whatever, I don't know how much, or Burrow Walnut. I think maybe, if you're looking at it for tone wood, I think maybe the burrow thing is maybe not as good. I don't know. Um, but I think the most important thing is the build. Um, and the, the neck on this is just fantastic. It really does feel like a very expensive guitar. Um, I, 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 I have to say that I don't think the, the sticker on the headstock that says Corker is particularly expensive. I mean, I, I got uh, stickers made for... I don't have one line about them, but it said Malco on them, and basically they're just like that, apart from it said Malco, uh, so it's just basically a sticker on the top there. Um, I don't know if Corker works the same way in America, maybe. Uh, this was built in um, VA, is it Virginia? Something like that. Uh, 
and I'm, I'm in thinking that this is the only one in the whole world, uh, the only guitar that looks like this. Uh, I have I've found another few cor corkers. I found two the two Telecasters that Bill sold, a sort of Stratocaster with no scratch plate, and the one in the picture is kind of like a bit more. I been I been his musician, he Bob Weary looking, and then my pal Michael found one yesterday, which was. Again, in that vein, it was a through neck and a, not not this shape basically. So this is, I'm to go. I've got some pretty rare guitars, the Japanese ones, and I've never seen any of them else for sale. But I'm pretty sure, even at Yamaki plant, they were made in batches of twenty five. So there's, I don't think you're ever really going to get one. Some of the ones I've got probably are, you know, there maybe only be twenty five of them or fifty of them or a hundred of them, sort of thing. Quite a lot of the guitars I, I like my favourite ones. Um, but I think this one, there, there is only one. Um, and the only thing I'm, I would change about it, as I said, is I want that switch to work properly. And I would rather have to have a two pearly dots on the edge of the fingerboard, but that's just a small thing. It doesn't, now, now, that, now that I know where it is, uh, it's fine. So it'll be interesting to see whether this becomes my show offy guitar, which is normally my Washburn Falcon when people are coming in with their, their Les Pauls and their Fenders and their American expensive guitars. And it's like, oh, look at this. And they're like, oh, this might, it's a bit like that. It's, it's like overly ornate. It's not the sort of guitar I would normally buy. I like a really basic guitar with no fancy bits on it. You know, just basically build it well. And I'm happy. So I'm like my wee uh, Ibanez Roadster there. But this one, it is quite nice having all the fancy stuff on it. It's... I'm kind of, I'm kind of wanting to, I'm going to get hold of my pal Ivor and go to the studio with him um, and I could get the drummer from Sabbath to come in with us just so I can play it live, uh, play it in, a, in the studio because I can I can sort of see this being my guitar a wee bit now, um, I think. Uh, the problem with these is, I mean, I know it's not worth really that much, it's not worth as much money as it should be because, like most of my Japanese ones, I said that the guy, um, Bill was dropping the price on it, I think it started at 1500 bucks and it was down at, if, if, whether it's still on Reverb just now, it was still on it last week when I saw it and I think it was down at 599 something like that, so it basically halved in price. No one's ever paid any interest in it, I think it tells you when people are watching, stuff like that, nobody's watching it just because it looks different and people are scared of different I'm not. I think it looks absolutely amazing. I, w I wasn't keen on the scratch plate at first, but now, yeah, get used to it. It's really lively feeling. So, expect another video this week of once I've had a go at trying to re redo this uh, super switch thing, the freeway switch, to doing what I want it to do. Um, the thing is, it's not, it's not like a set thing. If I wire it up and I decide that one of the sounds is maybe lacking a little bit, that's what I'm, I'm thinking of it. You know, the obvious way of doing it is just to have the top row as the same as a Les Paul, so you get you know, that this pickup, both of them, this one. But the both pickups on at the same time is not really a sound I ever use. Um, both of them on at the same time when it's split, for sure, definitely. I would That, that would be possibly how I would like if I was going to wire a guitar. In fact, I did it with the... Ibanez one, um, the Ibanez RX, is it? The Bucky Caster that uh, Pete and Diesel have. It's just got a three-way lever on it, and I wired it so that you had humbucker, both pickups split, so you get your sort of middle Telecaster sound and then humbucker, which is like, if you're going to have three sounds, those are the three I want. Um, which is basically what I'm, what I'm aiming to have on the top layer of this, and then, in addition, you can push it down and get the, the other, whether one of them be the inner coils, one of them be the outer coils. I'll decide which which way round I prefer them to be. Not really bothered. Then split it to probably, probably the two extremes. Probably I would use the you know the the south coil of the bridge pickup and the north coil to get the, the biggest gap between them. And then yeah, so on the bottom layer I'll have this pickup, and then in the middle I'll have the outside two coils, and then that one will just be the outside coil. I think. Although there is something to be said for the north coil of the bridge pickup sounding a bit better because it's not quite as trebly, it's a bit more usable, just being, it's, being it's only, you know, what's that, half an inch closer to the neck, but that makes a difference. And the same with the neck pickup, or like the neck one, you want it to be right under the where the 24th fret would be because there's a node for the, something to do with the harmonics of the string. You just get like that pure woo sound. 
I think it's very well picked pickups. I think they're intentional for this. I mean, I, I remember talking to folk before, and they're talking about you know if you've got like a a mahogany body, you need a, you know you need an Onico five mag magnet. If you've got like a maple, you want it to be like you know a a different one, a lower output, and all this stuff to match the guitar. There might be something to do with that. Um, generally, a lot most of the Japanese guitars I've got, I haven't changed the pickups because the ones they came with were the right pickups. Um, even like that one there, the Telecaster, which actually had when I got it, I had a Seymour Duncan in the neck and uh a 78 or a 79 tele fender pickup in the bridge I, and but it came with the original wax on to put the original max on in it and they sound absolutely amazing whereas with, with the other pickups in it, it kind of sounded like a normal guitar whereas now that one it just sounds mental now it's it, i really like it just get, kind of getting more more of a different sound out of it um I've, I've not actually played any of these guitars since i get back the only thing i've played is this and the wee red bass because i put a bass line on when it was jamming when i yesterday so expect to get pretty sick of looking at this guitar. Um, I bet you it starts. It looks better the more you see it as well. I now think it looks amazing. Whereas when I first got it, it was like pure. I think there's actually a video of the first time I ever saw it when I was outside the shop. Whether it was on my GoPro or on one of the videos I put up, I was standing outside the shop having a fag look. Because there's a guitar called a Corker. Doesn't that look mental? That was the first I'd ever actually seen it. Um, live. Little did I know I would have it back in Scotland, here, and it would be mine. Um. I think it was six six fifty, was it was the, the price ticker on it? I do have that lying about. I didn't obviously I didn't throw that away. Um, is it in the pocket of my, my new denim jacket? Cheers, Jen. Got this at this mad my, my, um, I've got a purple Levi's denim jacket. Reminds me of my when I was at uni. I had a, a brown one which I always thought looked like uh, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, I think that's it. Around it. There you go. See, Corker Walnut. Six nine nine Walnut Barrel, and there's B and L Custom Guitars, who you should check out. I think they sell most of their stuff on Reverb. Front Diner Street, Front Street Harrisburg. Yeah, so I was like, you get you can collect mementos and buy things. I was I, I didn't buy I didn't want to buy anything. Um, I was over there, but I kept lots of stuff. Cause it was um, stuff like you know, business cards and you know, different types of cigarette papers. And if you ever go to America, take. Uh, take filters with you for if you smoke roll-ups because they don't sell them um the only ones you can get i was buying these sort of i think it's for some sort of you know one of these fag machines where you get like a hollow cigarette with a filter on it and you kind of use some machine to poke the tobacco in um that was all you could really get so it was, i didn't really want, want that so i was having to roll smoking i was smoking this pure crazy gambler tobacco which was really cheap it was only like three quid for a pack a pouch but um my god was it dry and and strong like the first couple of fags i had i was like total head spinner and i had to wait like two hours to smoke another one then i get then i get used to it there we go back to usual 40 minutes of rabbling on rock on catch you later <laughs>